Welcome back, everyone. It's been a long time since my last upload, and that's because I've been out of content. I've just been starved for content. But finally, I've been back. I've, I'm back from a tournament in the Meadows, which is English for Las Vegas, the North American Open, and we're going to be looking at some games that I played. So I'm playing in the under twenty three hundred section. So I'm trying to gain some rating. And in the first time, in the first game, I'm paired against a twenty two hundred with white. And this is a great pairing, uh, not because my opponent is a floor rated, floor rated player, uh, my opponent's peak is around 2300, so my opponent's very strong, but because if I win this game, I can get a lot of rating and just get off to a very good start, and also cross 2100 for the first time. So let's see what happens in this first game. Start with e4, and we get the Karo Khan. So we play some pretty standard moves, we get the card pop variation. Takes, takes, and bishop c4, bishop f4, castles, and bishop d6. And this is kind of the first decision of the game, whether to take the bishop or to keep pieces on the board with bishop e5. And I just have to take, just to keep it simple, trying to take too many risks, because it is a 60-minute game. So I'm playing in the three-day section. The first two games are uh, faster, and then in the later rounds, we merge with the four days, with the four-day section. So this is a faster game, so I'm trying not to take too many risks. But looking back, since I'm playing a higher rated opponent and it's a faster game, I should basically make the uh, make the game as crazy as possible with a lot of tactics and try to beat my opponent that way instead of a boring positional game. So anyways, I take c3, just trying to be solid, castles, h3. h3 is a little bit unnecessary because bishop g4 isn't a problem at all. I can just play queen d3 and knight e5 if we ever get this pin. But play h3, uh, rook f to d8. My opponent's idea here is to play this pawn break c5, which would open up black space a little with the c file and also try to fight for the d file potentially. So I play rook to e1, c5, and now I play queen to e2, sidestepping the file. And I don't want to take this pawn because after queen c5, it opens up the uh, d file for the rook, and I'll, it's also attacking my bishop. And then my opponent can start to stack on this d file and Black just has better control here. So I play queen to e2 instead, trying to clear out the space for another rook here. And now my opponent plays bishop to e4. And this is a very good square and also diagonal for the bishop. It's attacking, it's just uh, looking at the king side over here. And it's also pretty difficult to get rid of, as we'll see later in the game. So I play rook to d1. I could play knight g5 here, but after bishop d5, it doesn't really go anywhere. So I play rook to d1. My opponent plays h6, stopping at g5 anyway, even though it wasn't really uh, an idea. And now I play knight to d2, um, trying to attack the bishop. So my idea with this move is to rewrite the knight to b3, and the reason to do this is to basically try to force this pawn to take, because if the pawn takes, I can recapture with the rook, and then get basically a head start on stacking on the d file. So I play knight to d2, and I saw that my opponent can play this move, bishop c2, um, gaining time on this rook and forcing it off of the file. But what I missed was that after I moved the rook, Black can actually play an intermezzo or an intermediate move, taking this pawn on d4. And it looks like it's sacrificing the bishop, but my rook and queen are placed in such a way that d3 is actually a fork. And this is unfortunate because I have to give up my bishop. And after the queen takes, Black just has a lot of control over the d file. There are other rooks going to come over here. And I'm basically going to be defending for the rest of the game which is not very pleasant at all. So I was not very happy when I saw bishop c2. Even though I saw this as a move, I'd missed that black could take on d4. But fortunately, since it was a faster game, my opponent just dropped back to f5 pretty quickly, so I was, I was very happy to see that. I play knight to b3, my opponent does take, and unfortunately, I can't recapture with the rook because it is on c1, but I take with the knight, which is pretty good too. So I'm attacking the bishop, and it goes back to e4. And this is where it starts to get very annoying because it's not like I can trade the bishop because after it takes, there is e5, which would win the knight due to the pin. And it's also hard to move the queen in a way so such that rook takes e4 would be a threat. So this bishop here is just very, very annoying. And f3 I don't like because it makes weaknesses around the king. So I'm basically going to have to live with this bishop for the time being. So I play rook to d1, moving the rook to the open file, queen b6. Bishop b3, consolidating this structure over here, and also defending the rook, and also preparing to move queen to b5. And my opponent allows this after rook to c8. And the reason queen to b5 is a move that I like is because 
If the queen trades, then knight to b5, I'm threatening a lot of forks with this knight. It's becoming very jumpy. For example, after a6, knight to d6 would be a fork on the rook and the bishop. This would be very good. And even if I'm on it trades, after I'm still attacking this pawn, after a6, I can attack. I can play this move again. And if rook d8, then I can take. My opponent has to take. And then I really uh, I liked this endgame a lot. Because after bishop f3, I have a really good bishop. The knight has to drop back, protecting these pawns. These pawns are on light squares. There's pawns on both sides of the board. It's very open. So I really like this bishop over the knight. I can just start pushing these pawns. It's a very, very simple endgame idea. And I don't think I'm in any sort of danger. Here. But none of this happens, obviously. It's uh, my opponent wouldn't go into that endgame. Or just make any of these complications. Instead, he sidesteps with, he just sidesteps with the queen. And now I missed this opportunity to sacrifice the knight and basically get this fork and get a rook and two pawns for the bishop and the knight. And that's a very interesting imbalance. Um, rook and a pawn versus bishop and the knight is usually better for the bishop and the knight. In most cases, sometimes it's better for the rook, but in more cases than not, the bishop and the knight is better. But here I'm getting two pawns. So I'm really thinking about whether I should do this and get the bishop, uh, get the rook and two pawns for the bishop and knight. And I, I decided not to do this because after king to h8, I thought that the bishop could just drop back on this good diagonal and this knight could possibly start attacking. But it turns out that this is actually okay for white and it's actually slightly, slightly better because I have two rooks which are just active. But instead I just play queen to b4, try, uh, trying to play knight b5 and get this knight to be very active but my opponent plays bishop d5 trying to trade bishops which is a good move centralizing the bishop and now for knight b5 we have queen b6 and i was thinking to play c5 and uh, c4 and c5 and it looked like this queen was just um, basically getting trapped after queen a6 because i can play knight to c7 and my opponent can't take because that is just the rook but unfortunately what i missed was that this knight isn't protected anymore so i just didn't see that so I have to play a4 first to protect the knight, and now I am actually threatening c5. My opponent can play a5 attacking my queen. And at this point, um, both me and my opponent have about like 10 minutes on the clock, or maybe even closer to 7. So we're in a bit of time pressure, so I'm trying to make just make as make a lot of moves and try to simplify try to simplify the position at this point. But not too simple because I do want to make it a little bit spicy. So queen e7, rook to e8, queen d6, the other rook moves to d8, and, my, and I centralize the queen on e5. So now if we look at this position, it's not as good as it once was. Uh, this bishop's kind of staring to pawns. This knight looks good on b5, but uh, black can take it at any moment if he wants to, but this bishop is also just good. This queen's on a diagonal, and uh, this rook's, this open file is basically occupied by both of us. So it's about equal, black's maybe slightly better. But uh, we're both long time, so anything can still happen. Knight a7 attacks the queen. Black's trying to reroute to c5, which is logical. Um, queen to c3, knight c5, bishop c2. Now I'm trying to get to this diagonal and try to just create as many threats as I can. So in a time scramble, it's good to create. In a time scramble, it's good to create threats because it forces your opponent to deal with the threats, which is easier than making threats. It's a lot easier to make threats than defend against threats. So my opponent takes, and my opponent just starts trading rooks, and I think this is logical because in, the, in an endgame, black's pawn structure is probably more solid than mine, and black's pieces are also just slightly better. So I avoid the trades at rook d7, my opponent's trying to stack with the queen, makes a lot of sense. I play b4, trying to just complicate the queen side, and for takes, takes, I'm threatening a5. My opponent plays knight a6, attacking the queen, queen c3. Queen to d8, so now my opponent's stacking, and I have to make some threats soon, or else black just has a better position, basically. So I play bishop b1, trying to drop back to make space for my queen. Knight c5, and now queen c2. So I'm threatening queen h7 check, we get g6, and now queen c1, making another threat on h6. And black has queen h4 here and rook d2, these are both really good moves, but not really too simple to see when under a lot of pressure on the on the clock so my opponent plays h5 which is the simple move and in a lot of in a lot of the future positions black has this move queen to g5 which would create a threat and this threat is very annoying to deal with because i don't really want to play f3 because of queen g5 and f3 there's rook d2 
This looks very scary. I'd probably have to play, and I don't want to play Queen G3 either, because still after Rook D2, this does not look good at all. After Bishop E4, this is probably the best, but after Knight C5, Black just has more activity, and after takes and takes, Black's probably going to take this pawn at some point. Um, but luckily, my opponent never does that, and after Queen C2, I'm just start start making threats. Queen A3, another threat on the knight, and my opponent does get Rook to D1, which looks scary. Uh, what did I just? Okay, which looks scary, but I can just trade. And catch two, and my and my plan was just to take the knight after he takes the bishop. And now my opponent has another kind of weird move, which is queen f1, and this is very strong because it threatens checkmate, and it also does a backwards attack on this pawn. But this kind of move is just hard to see in a time scramble, and I think at this point we have like around one minute on the clock, so it's getting very crazy now. So f3, um, well this didn't happen. Um, we get takes instead. I take the knight. And at this point, I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I'm in as much danger as I was with more pieces, the Rook and the Knight. Uh, my opponent can make some threats, but I can just deal with those threats. So we got f3, um, check, check, and we just get a bunch of checks. And this is a good strategy by, by my opponent because there is a 10 second delay, which I probably should have mentioned earlier. But there's a 10 second delay. And with increment, it's obviously good to just do check, 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 because your time just goes up, like plus 10 seconds, plus 10 seconds. And although that doesn't happen with delay, it's still good to do, because when you make a check and your opponent moves, you can basically think for 10 seconds, make another check, think for 10 seconds, and then make a check, and just use that delay to think, even though you're not gaining time from the delay. So just taking advantage of the time control. So we get check, check, and then h4. And now I play a5. And a5, the point of that is I want to trade queens at some point with like queen d4 or queen to d6. But it's hard to do that when this pawn is hanging on a4. So that's why I played a5. My opponent checked. Checked again. Played queen to d2. Now there's a threat of bishop takes f3. So now I offered the first trade of queens and also the last trade of queens because my opponent does take. Uh, actually doesn't. Wait, never mind. Never mind. I uh, My opponent doesn't trade queens. Um, so my opponent can't take because I'm attacking the queen, but my opponent takes the pawn, takes the pawn instead. And now I'm basically just trying to make a draw with check. Queen to b8. And I was expecting, uh, king e5 and then just queen, uh, king to g7 and then queen e5. Um, and then just a lot of checks. But instead my opponent plays king to h7, and now I have queen to f4 attacking both pawns at once. And now, um, I think at this point... I had 9 seconds, and my opponent had 17 seconds. So none of us are notating anymore, so the rest of the game might not be completely accurate. But I do remember that my opponent played queen to d8, which just hangs f7. So finally, the crazy position pays off for me, and my opponent just blunders a pawn. Um, this still isn't completely winning yet, but uh, with an extra pawn and both kings weak, it's just very difficult. And also in time scrambles, it's good to have a knight. Now, although I don't really use that knight, I am able to eventually, eventually what happens is I take this pawn, I trade this pawn, uh, these two pieces get traded somehow, um, king walks up to here, queen takes this pawn, but then queen somehow goes to g5 and the king's here. So the king's here, queen's here, and the other queen is here, the king is here. So I trade off the queens, and then I just have this pawn and this pawn versus this pawn, and the king is here, um, the king is king is here, and then the king is here. I'll probably, I'll, actually, I'm just going to set up that position real quick. Um, okay, so queens get traded. Obviously, this doesn't happen. This is actually a really dumb way to do this. Uh, I don't know. Okay, and then... Uh, hold on. This is a really bad way to, do, to set it up. Okay. Uh, it's okay, so something like this happens. Wait, no, this isn't this isn't the right pawn. But something like this happens, and I can just walk over here, and I win this pawn, and I win the game. Okay, so um, very crazy game. Um, sixty minute games are usually like this, but I do get on the winning side of this game, which is very nice because I start off the tournament with a win, which is good. I also beat a twenty two hundred, and I also get to twenty one hundred rating at this point. So very nice first game, strong start, and 
let's see how the rest of the tournament goes because it does not go as, as expected or planned just to just as a like a foreshadowing or something okay so thank you everyone for watching it's been a while since i uploaded but we will get some consistent uploads for the rest of the content that i got from this tournament so see you in the next video bye everyone